right, students. For those of you who are absent, we have a new tab that we need. So before you get started, make sure to ask me. Oh, sorry about that. For this uh, new tab, because we're going into algebraic reasoning right here using number pairs, and you're going to just cut that out and put it in your notebook like this. See that? And then that's then your next page will be what we talk about for your number pairs. So just make sure you ask me for that, okay? All right, so number pairs. They're also called input-output tables. Now, of course, pause if you need to. Fast forward, rewind, however you need. This is at your own pace. So the title is input-output tables. And I apologize that it's blurry. It's readjusting. There you go. So that's your title, input-output tables. They're also known as pattern relationship tables because really what it is is trying to figure out what's the pattern. Okay. All right. Now, in pattern relationship tables or input output tables, and I want you to do it exactly as you see me do it. So you're going to need to skip a line. If they skip a line, you skip a line. So I'm going to skip a line. And we'll put, you need to find the process. The process means how to get to the other side. You have a process. For example, and it's also known as the rule. Sorry, real quick. Okay, when I have parentheses next to that word, if you remember in reading, that means they're telling you what that word means. So process is basically a rule. So you have a rule. You have a process to get to school. To get from your house to school, you might ride the bus, the car, you walk, take bike, ride your bike. But there is a process to get to the other side. And that's how it is with input-output tables. There is a process to get to the other side. There's a rule. There's something there that takes you there. A bus takes you to school. Well, there's a rule that takes you there. And you'll see what I mean as I keep going. Now, make a space. You can come on this side. This is very important. The rule must, yes, I want you to capitalize all of it and underline it, work for all pairs. And yes, I want you to capitalize all the L, L the A, L, L. Okay, and then put a cloud around it. That means it's really important. So as you find the rule, you have to make sure the rule works for everything. And you'll see what I mean as I show you. It can't just be the first one. you got to check to the very end, okay? Now, there's different types of pattern relationship tables, input-output tables. There are some that are vertical, so they can be vertical. Remember, pause if you need to to copy. And I'm going to draw these arrows. You draw them too. Vertical means up and down. That's vertical. When the um, table is vertical, you read left to right. So I'm going to put that note under here. Read left to right. Okay. Now, I'm going to skip a line. You want to skip it, okay? And then I'm going to draw a line, okay? So one. Okay, there we go, like this, like about five spaces. Okay? So let's pretend we have something like people. You're going to see the relationship between people and eyes. Now, I made a space here because in pattern relationship tables, they'll just be one line like this. But you need to draw what I call a process line. Add a line because then that tells you the process, the rule you need to get from the other side. Okay? So I'm going to have people. Let's say I have, and then, oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Let's label what this is. This side is called the input, and this side is called the output. The middle is your process, which is also your rule. Okay, I'm gonna give you some time to do that without having to pause. I had a parent just text me. I want to make sure I reply to this because this is important. Okay, so now let's say you have one person, one people, that sounds funny, two, three, four. 
If you have one person, how many eyes would you count if someone was in front of you? There's just one person. It would be two, right? That's your output. If you had two people, how many eyes would you see? You would see four eyes. I'm not talking about four eyes of one person. It's meaning if I said count the eyes of the people next to you or in front of you, you would see four eyes with two people. Three people would be six eyes. Four people would be eight. Okay? Now, there's a process to get to the other side. Always leave, you have to always read left to right. Never read down. Never sit, read all the input, all the output. That's wrong. You have to go left to right. You have to read input to output. So from one to two, notice it gets bigger. There are two operations that get bigger, adding or multiplying. So if I add one, I do get two. But remember here, the rule must work for all pairs. Uh... Wow, the rule must work for all for pair. Okay, I'm so sorry. I just realized that's a typo. Uh, well, not a typo, but I wrote that wrong. So the rule must work for all pairs. Okay, so one plus one is two, but I got to make sure it works for all of them because these are pairs. Two plus one. So if I think the rule's plus one, I got to use it all the way through. Two plus one is three. Oh, wait, I got four, so that can't work. So let me try multiplication. Well, one times two is two. Two times two is four. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. I found the rule because it works for all pairs. The rule or the process is the same thing is times 2. The process is times 2. And this is the way that you would show work for pattern relationship tables. You would draw your process line and put the rule, okay, or and put the process. So that's what it looks like when you have a uh, vertical pattern relationship table. You read from left to right. But you can also have horizontal. So I'm going to skip a line and say they can also be, well, they can be horizontal. And yes, draw the line that you see. That's horizontal. Okay? Now, when it's horizontal, you're going to read top to bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to put right here, I'm going to put people. Okay, I'm going to do it right underneath though. You'll see why. Draw a line because it's horizontal. Eyes. Oh, I didn't leave my, I should have put a space in between, but that's okay. And then this time your input is the top okay yes copy that now you want to draw a process line and I didn't skip a line but this is pretty much what it would be like it would be real thin and you just have to make your own okay this is your process line try your best to copy that you can skip a line because you can just pause and do it I I'm just gonna keep going and the bottom is the output okay there's your output so top is input, bottom is output. And like we said, one person, we're going to use the same example like we did, is two eyes. Two people, you would count four eyes. Three people, you would count six eyes. Four people, you would count eight eyes. And the process is still times two. As I said, my suggestion is you should just keep have that line. Use three lines to make a line, but it's okay. As long as you can understand, your process will be in the middle, and it, when it's horizontal, it's top to bottom. You read top to bottom, okay? You never read all input, all output. It has to be input, output. And we're going to write that, as a matter of fact, as our notes so we won't forget. So underneath here, and if you run out of space, it's okay to turn the page and use the back to continue. So we're going to go ahead and write that. This is a rule, this is something, a rule, yeah, that you have to do every time you have input output tables. You need to always read input to output. Always, okay? And yes, I'm going to put a cloud around it because that is super important. Always read input to output. Mm. Underline that. Never do input, all input, all output. Always input to output, input to output, okay? Now, this is just a little tip. When the numbers are 
get bigger. Add or multiply. Okay, so it's like when I saw one goes up to two and two goes up to four, that tells me the two operations that go up, it has to be either addition or multiplication. And remember, we tried it at first, the one plus one, it didn't work, it has to work for all of it. So then we did multiplication, we're like, oh, it works. Now, when the numbers get smaller, You subtract or divide. I forgot my or. Make sure you put your or. Okay, you just try it. So there's all types of tables. The tables, input, output tables could either be addition, multiplication, subtraction, or division. You just have to see if it works all the way through. We'll be practicing that today, the rest of this week, which is the week before Christmas break. And when we come back from Christmas break, we'll practice this, okay? All right, make sure you copy this in your math notebook so you can go back to as notes to use to help you.